Welcome back. You're watching Tennessee Valley Living. So I saw a meme a few weeks ago during all the tax return craziness that is April, and it said, uh, I'm glad I learned about parallelograms in school instead of how to do my taxes. It's really come in handy this parallelogram season. Right, obvious joke being, of course, they don't teach us a lot of the things we kids are supposed to know upon graduation. So thank goodness we have self-made millionaire and certified financial educator Steve Siebold to give some financial tips for the new grad. Steve, thank you for being here. It's a very important conversation we're having this morning, uh, one that's going to help a lot of people I know. You say most grads have the potential to make millions if they change the way they think about money. What do you mean by this? How can we change our thinking? Yeah, exactly, Peyton. I mean, most of us grow up being taught that money is uh, uh, something to look down on. It's uh, it's it surrounds fear and scarcity and very negative has very ne negative connotations for most of us. But if you look at money in terms of opportunity and freedom and potential, it changes the way you approach earning it. All right, very interesting. I love again the idea of viewing money as an opportunity, just like you said. I think though, for a lot of young people, um, it's it's all they can do to pay their rent, right? And like the idea of, of saving or investing in the stock market, putting it in a 401k, like that kind of feels impossible. How can young people really maximize those starter salaries really no matter how small at their first job? Well, I think it starts with, with, with expectation, having high expectations instead of low expectations about what you can do. And it is a process, it takes time. And when you're starting out, uh, you have to you know, reduce your debt and try to increase your income and invest at the same time. It's not the easiest thing to do. And that's why we wrote this book, How Money Works, to teach people the basics, as you mentioned in the, in the, in the opening, that we don't learn in school. Yeah. And uh, we should learn in school, but the financial lobby won't have it. They're, they're, uh, they the richer they get. Yeah, very interesting takeaway there. And so what are some practical ways, Steve, that new graduates can find those good jobs, negotiate those salaries, right, set those standards high, and really make the most of those initial career steps? Well, I think when you're looking for work, you know, for example, if you're interviewing for a job, to look at how you can solve a company's problems. I mean, I've, I've employed hundreds and hundreds of people in my companies around the world for 35 years, and, and most applicants come in and they talk about what they want from the job as opposed to what they can offer mm -hmm. a company or an organization. And so focus on how you can solve an organization's problems, because the bigger problems you solve, the more money they pay you. Yeah, interesting. I think too, and th part of that is just finding what your talents are, right? I think I was told success happens where talent intersects with intersects with passion, right? Like what you love combined with what you're good at, and like you said, how you can solve problems for a company, what you can bring to the table uh, will really make you a valuable asset. Steve, very good insights. Thank you so much. Uh, great info, not only for the grads, but even the grown-ups out there. So we certainly appreciate the time, and um, thank you again so much for this conversation. Thanks, Bain. All right, switching gears a little bit now because it's not all work and no play.